Shalom, shalom. Welcome, welcome, world changers. Today, we're going to get into a very interesting book called For Baruch, For Baruch, the fourth book of Baruch. Uh, there's also another name for it, which is uh, Paralepomia Yeremiu, which is a uh, Greek uh, transliteration, which means the things that are left out of the book of Jeremiah. So, uh, very interesting reading it's going to be tonight. I'm going to read uh, for, for Baruch, and this book is in the, the Bible canon of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. For those of you who know me, you know that I believe that the Ethiopian Orthodox Bible is the closest to the original um, in regards to Bible canon, okay? Uh, you know, I think that the Ethiopian Orthodox Church has got it. Uh, I wouldn't say perfect, but they have got a Bible canon that is closer to the to the Bible canon per se that the uh, New Testament Book of Acts Church had. So um, let's see what we have here in the chat. Now, just before we do that, just give me a second here. Um, all right. So what we have here in the chat. We have Psalm 94 says, Shalom. Shalom, Psalm 94. Good to see you. Going Nowhere says, hey, everyone. Hey there, Going Nowhere. I'm glad you're going nowhere. Staying right here. Uh, Kalamentos says, Shalom, everyone. Shalom, Kalamentos. Good to see you. Fearmonger says, Shalom. Shalom, brother. Good to see you. Welcome. And Question for Move says, Shalom. Shalom, Question for Move. Welcome, 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 everyone. So, yes, blessings multiplied to each and every one of you that are listening, whether you put anything in the live chat or not. Um, it's my prayer that the discussion we're going to have tonight is going to be a great blessing to you. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to read from 4th Baruch, and then we're going to get right into your questions and comments and just, uh, you know, End it off with a great discussion of, of any, any of your questions and comments that you wish to, to ask or talk about with either myself or the group. If you have something that you want to bring specifically to my attention, just put at Christopher Enoch on there. That would bring it specifically to my attention. I'll try to get to as many comments as possible. Um, but just in case there are going to be a lot, which usually there are a lot, um, just put at Christopher in there just to uh, make that kind of pop out to me, okay? So let's get into it, guys. We are reading from 4th Baruch, for Baruch. And um, again, this is interesting because like, I'm not saying everything it says here is 100% perfect, but it is very, very interesting. I think that every believer should read it. I think every believer should... Um, study it. It is canonical in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. It is Bible. It is scripture, according to them. So I think we need to read this and uh, and and study, meditate on it, discuss it. Now, let me just kind of blow it up a little bit here, zoom in a little bit just to make it easier for you guys to read, especially if you're on mobile devices. Now, there is what they call the longer version and the shorter version of this. Uh, the longer version is a little bit longer, of course. Um, and so we're just going to go through the whole thing, uh, starting with, I believe this is beginning with the so-called longer version. Things omitted from Jeremiah the prophet. Verse 1, It came to pass when the children of Israel were taken captive by the, kings, the king of the Chaldeans, that God spoke to Jeremiah, saying, Jeremiah, my chosen one, arise and depart from this city, you and Baruch, since I am going to destroy it because of the multitude of sins of those who dwell in it. For your prayers are like a solid pillar in its midst and like an indestructible wall surrounding it. Now then arise and depart before the host of the Chaldeans, excuse me, before the host of the Chaldeans surrounds it. And Jeremiah answered, saying, I beseech you, Lord, permit me, your servant, to speak in your presence. And the Lord said to him, Speak, my chosen one, Jeremiah. And Jeremiah, Jeremiah spoke, saying, Lord Almighty, would you deliver the chosen city into the hands of the Chaldeans so that the king 
with the multitude of his people might boast and say, I have prevailed over the holy city of God? No, my Lord, but if it is your will, let it be destroyed by your hands. And the Lord said to Jeremiah, Since you are my chosen one, arise and depart from this city, you and Baruch, for I am going to destroy it because of the multitude of the sins who dwell in it, of those who dwell in it. For neither the king nor his host will be able to enter it unless I first open its gates. Arise then and go to Baruch and tell him these words. And when you have arisen at the sixth hour of the night, go out on the city walls and I will show you that unless I first destroy the city, they cannot enter it. And when the Lord had said this, he departed from Jeremiah. And Jeremiah ran and told these things to Baruch. And as they went into the temple of God, Jeremiah tore his garments and put dust on his head and entered the holy place of God. And when Baruch saw him with dust sprinkled on his head and his garments torn, he cried out with a loud voice saying, Father Jeremiah, what are you doing? What sin has the people committed? For when people sinned, Jeremiah would sprinkle dust on his head and would pray for the people until their sin was forgiven. So Baruch asked him, saying, Father, what is this? And Jeremiah said to him, Refrain from rending your garments. Rather, let us rend our hearts. And let us not draw water for the trough, But let us weep and fill them with tears, for the Lord will not have mercy on his people. And Baruch said, Father Jeremiah, what has happened? And Jeremiah said, God is delivering the city into the hands of the king of the Chaldeans to take the people captive into Babylon. And when Baruch heard these things, he also tore his garments and said, Father Jeremiah, who has made this known uh, uh, to you? And Jeremiah said to him, Stay with me a while until the sixth hour of the night, so that you may know that this word is true. Therefore they they both remained in the altar area weeping, and their garments were torn. And when the altar of the night, excuse me, and when the hour of the night arrived, as the Lord had told Jeremiah, they came up together on the walls of the city, Jeremiah and Baruch. And behold, there came a sound of trumpets, and angels emerged from heaven, holding torches in their hands, and they set them on the walls of the city. And when Jeremiah and Baruch saw them, they wept, saying, Now we know that the word is true. And Jeremiah besought the angels, saying, I beseech you, do not destroy the city yet until I say something to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to the angels, saying, Do not destroy the city until I speak to my chosen one, Jeremiah. Then Jeremiah spoke, saying, I beg you, Lord, bid me to speak in your presence. And the Lord said, Speak, my chosen one, Jeremiah. And Jeremiah said, Behold, Lord, now we know that you are delivering the city into the hands of its enemies, and they will take the people away to Babylon. What do you want me to do with the holy vessels of the temple service? And the Lord said to him, Take them and consign them to the earth, saying, Hear, earth, the voice of your Creator, who formed you in the abundance of waters, who sealed you with, the se- with seven seals for seven epochs. And after this, you will receive your ornaments. Guard the vessels of the temple service until the gathering of the beloved. And Jeremiah spoke, saying, I beseech you, Lord, show me what I should do for Abimelech the Ethiopian, for he has done many kindnesses to your servant Jeremiah. For he pulled me out of the miry pit, and I do not wish that he should see the destruction and desolation of this city, but that you should be merciful to him, and that he should not be grieved. And the Lord said to Jeremiah, Send him to the vineyard of Agrippa, and I will hide him in the shadow of the mountain until I 
cause the people to return to this city. And you, Jeremiah, go with your people into Babylon and stay with them, preaching to them until I cause them to return to the city. But leave Baruch here until I speak with him. When he had said these things, the Lord ascended from Jeremiah into heaven. But Jeremiah and Baruch entered a place, and taking the vessels of the holy service, or the temple service, they consigned them to the earth as the Lord had told them. And immediately the Lord swallowed them. Excuse me. And immediately the the earth swallowed them. And they both sat down and wept. And when morning came, Jeremiah sent Abimelech, saying, Take a basket and go to the estate of Agrippa by the mountain road and bring back some figs to give to the sick people, the sick among the people, for the favor of the Lord is on you and his glory is on your head. And when he had said this, Jeremiah sent him away and Abimelech went as he he told him, when morning came, behold, the host of the Chaldeans surrounded the city. And the great angel trumpeted, enter the city, host of the Chaldeans, for behold, the gate is open for you. Therefore, let the king enter with, with his multitudes and let him take all the people captive. But taking the keys of the temple, Jeremiah went outside the city and threw them away into the in the presence of the son saying i say to you son take the keys of the temple of god and guard them until the day in which the lord asks you for them for we have not been found worthy to keep them for we have become unfaithful guardians while jeremiah was still weeping for the people they brought him out with the people and dragged them into babylon but Baruch put dust on his head and sat and wailed his, this lamentation, saying, Why has J- Jerusalem been devastated? Because of the sins of the beloved people, she was delivered into the hands of enemies, because of our sins and those of the people. But let not the lawless ones boast and say, We were strong enough to take the city of God by our might but it was delivered to you because of our sins. And God will pity us and cause us to return to our city, but you will not survive. Blessed are our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for they departed from this world and did not see the destruction of this city. When he had said this, Baruch departed from the city, weeping and saying, Grieving because of you, Jerusalem, I went out from you. And he remained sitting in a tomb while the angels came to him and explained to him everything that the Lord revealed to him through through them. But Abimelech took the figs in the burning heat and coming upon a tree, he sat under its shade to rest a bit. And leaning his head on the basket of figs, he fell asleep and slept for 66 years. And he was not awakened from his slumber. And afterward, when he awoke from his sleep, he said, I I slept sweetly for a little while, but my head is heavy because I did not get enough sleep. Then he uncovered the basket of figs and found them dripping milk. And he said, I would like to sleep a little longer because my head is heavy. But I am afraid that I might fall asleep and be late in awakening my awakening. And my father, Jeremiah, would think badly of me. For if he were not in a hurry, he would not have sent me today at daybreak. So I will get up and proceed in the burning heat for, for isn't there heat Isn't there toil every day? So he got up and took the basket of figs and placed it on his shoulders, and he entered into Jerusalem and did not recognize it. Neither his own house nor the place, nor did he he find his own family or any of his acquaintances. 
And he said, The Lord be blessed, for a great trance has come over me today. This is not the city Jerusalem. And I have lost my way because I came by the mountain road when I arose from my sleep. And since my head was heavy because I did not get enough sleep, I lost my way. It will seem incredible to Jeremiah that I lost my way. And he departed from the city. And as he searched, he saw the landmarks of the city. And he said, Indeed, this is the city. I lost my way. And again, he returned to the city and searched and found no one of his own people. And he said, The Lord be blessed, for a great trance has come over me. And again, he departed from the city and staying there grieving, not knowing where he should go. And he put down the basket saying, I will sit here until the Lord takes this trance for me. And as he sat, he saw an old man coming from the field. And Abimelech said to him, I say to you, old man, what city is this? And he said to him, it is Jerusalem. And Abimelech said to him, where's Jeremiah the priest and Baruch the secretary and all the people of this city? For I could not find them. And the old man said to him, are you not from this city? Seeing that you remember Jeremiah today, because you are asking about him after such a long time? For Jeremiah is in Babylon with the people. For they have taken captive, excuse, excuse me, for they were, they were taken captive by King Nebuchadnezzar, and Jeremiah is with them to preach the good news to them and to teach them the word. As soon as Abimelech heard this from the old man, he said, If you were not an old man, and if it were not for the fact that it is not lawful for a man to upbraid one older than himself, I would laugh at you and say that you are out of your mind, since you say that the people have been taken captive into Babylon. Even if the heavenly torrents had descended on them, there has not been there has not yet been time for them to go into Babylon. For how much time has passed since my father Jeremiah sent sent to the estate of Agrippa to bring a few figs, so that I might give them to the sick among the people? And I went and, and got them, and when I came to a certain tree in the burning heat, I sat to rest a little, I, I, and I leaned my head on the basket and fell asleep. And when I awoke, I uncovered the basket of figs, supposing it was late, and I found the figs dripping milk, just as I had collected them. But you claim that the people have been taken captive into Babylon, but that you might know, take the figs and see. And he uncovered the basket of figs for the old man, and, and he saw them dripping milk. And when the old man saw them, he said, Oh, my son, you are a righteous man. And God did not want you to see the addition of the city. So he brought this trance on you. For behold, it is 66 years today since the people were taken captive into Babylon. But that you might learn that that what I tell you is true, look into the field and see that the ripening of the crops has not yet appeared. Has not appeared. And notice that the figs are not in season. And be enlightened. Then Abimelech cried out in a loud voice, saying, I bless you, God of heaven and earth, the rest of my, the rest of the souls of the righteous in every place. Then he said to the old man, and what month is this? And he said, Nisan, which is Abib. And taking some figs, he gave them to the old man and said to him, May God illumine your way to the city above Jerusalem. After this, Abimelech went out of the city and prayed to the Lord. And behold, an angel of the Lord came and took him by the right hand and brought him back to where Baruch was sitting and found him in a tomb. And when they saw each other, they both wept and kissed each other. But when Baruch looked up 
he saw with his own eyes the figs that were covered in Abimelech's basket. And lifting his eyes to heaven, he prayed, saying, You are the God who gives a reward to those who love you. Prepare yourself, my heart, and rejoice and be glad while you are in your tabernacle, saying to your fleshly house, Your grief has been changed to joy, for the sufficient one is coming and will deliver you into or in your tabernacle, for there is no sin in you. Revive in your tabernacle, in your virginal faith, and believe that you will live. Look at this basket of figs, for behold, they are 66 years old and have not become shriveled or rotten, but they are dripping milk. So it will be with you, my flesh, if you do what is commanded you by the angel of righteousness. He who preserved the basket of figs, the same will again preserve you by his power. When Baruch had said this, he said to Abimelech, Stand up and let us pray, that the Lord may make known to us how we shall be able to send to Jeremiah in Babylon the report about the shelter provided for you on the way. And Baruch prayed, saying, Lord God, our shield is the elect light which comes forth from your mouth. We beseech and beg of your goodness, you whose great name no one is able to know. Hear the voice of your servants and let let knowledge come into our hearts. For what shall we do and how shall we send this report to Jeremiah in Babylon? And while Baruch was still praying, behold, an angel of the Lord came and said all these words to Baruch. Agent of light, do not be anxious about how you will send to Jeremiah. Eagle is coming to you at the hour of light tomorrow, and you will direct him to Jeremiah. Therefore, write in a letter, say to the children of Israel, let the stranger who comes among you be set apart and let 15 days go by. And after this, I will lead you into your city, says the Lord. He who is not separated from Babylon will not enter into the city, and I will punish them by keeping them from being received back by the Babylonians, says the Lord. Excuse me, Babylonians, says the Lord. And when the angel has said this, he departed from Baruch, and Baruch set to the market of the Gentiles and got papyrus and ink and wrote a letter as follows. Baruch, the servant of God, writes to Jeremiah in the captivity of Babylon, Greetings. Rejoice, for God has not allowed us to depart from this body, grieving for the city which was laid waste and, out, and outraged. Wherefore the Lord has had compassion on our tears and has remembered the covenant which he established with our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he sent this, he sent his angel to me, and he told me these words which I send to you. These then are the words which the God of Israel spoke, who led us out of Egypt, out of the great furnace, because you did not keep my ordinances, but your heart was lifted up, and you were haughty before me. In anger and wrath I delivered you to the furnace in Babylon. If, therefore, says the Lord, you will listen to my voice, from, from the mouth of Jeremiah, my servant, I will bring the one who listens up from Babylon. But the one who does not listen will become a stranger to Jerusalem and to Babylon. And you will test them by means of the water of Jordan. Whoever does not listen will be exposed. This is the sign of the great seal. And Baruch got up and departed from the tomb and found the, the eagle sitting outside the tomb. And the eagle said to him in a human voice, Hail, Baruch, steward of the faith. And Baruch said to him, You who speak are chosen from among all the birds of heaven. 
For this is clear from the gleam of your eyes. Tell me then, what are you doing here? And the angel said to him, I was sent here so that you might, through me, send whatever message you want. And Baruch said to him, Can you carry this message to Jeremiah in Babylon? And the eagle said to him, Indeed, for uh, indeed it was for this reason I was sent. And Baruch took the letter and fifteen figs from Abimelech's basket and tied them to the eagle's neck and said to him, I say to you, king of the birds, go in peace with good health and carry the message for me. Do not be like the raven which Noah sent out and which never came back to him in the ark, but be like the dove which the third time brought a report to the righteous one. So you also take this good message to Jeremiah and to those in bondage with him, that it may be well with you. Take this papyrus to the people and to the chosen one of God. Even if all the birds of heaven surround you and want to fight with you in struggle, the Lord will give you strength. Do not, and do not turn aside to the right or to the left, but straight as a speeding arrow, go in the power of God. And the glory of the Lord will be with you the entire way. Then the eagle took flight and went away to Babylon, having the letter tied to his neck. When he arrived, he rested on a post outside the city in a desert place. And he kept silent until Jeremiah came along, for he and some of the people were coming out to bury a corpse outside the city. Jeremiah had petitioned King Nebuchadnezzar, saying, Give me a place where I may bury those of my people who have died. And the king gave it to him. And as they were coming out with the body and weeping, they came to, the, to where the eagle was. And the eagle cried out in a loud voice, saying, I say to you, Jeremiah, the chosen one of God, go, go and gather together people and come here so that they may hear a, a letter which I have brought to you from Baruch and Abimelech. And when Jeremiah heard this, he glorified God. And he went and gathered together the people along with their wives and children. And he came to where the eagle was. And the, and the eagle came down on the corpse and it revived. Now this took place so that they might believe. And all the people were astounded at what had happened and said, This is the God who appeared to our fathers in the wilderness through Moses. And now he has appeared to us through the eagle. And the eagle said, I say to you, Jeremiah, come, untie this letter and read it to the people. So he untied the letter and read it to the people. And when the people heard it, they wept and put dust on their heads. And they, sent, and they said to Jeremiah, deliver us and tell us what to do, that we may once again enter our city. And Jeremiah answered and said to them, do whatever you heard from the letter and the Lord will, will lead us into our city. And Jeremiah wrote a letter to Baruch saying, My beloved son, do not be negligent in your prayers, beseeching God on, on our behalf, that he might direct our way until we come out of the jurisdiction of the, this lawless king. For you have been found righteous before God, and he did not let you come here lest you see the affliction which has come upon the people at the hands of the Babylonians. For it is like a father with an only son, who is given over for punishment, and those who see his father and console him over his, his face, lest he see how his son is being punished, and be even more ravaged by grief. For thus God took pity on you, and did not let you enter Babylon, lest you see the affliction of the people. For since we came here, grief has not left us for 66 years today. For many times, 
when I went out, I found some of the people hung up by, by King Nebuchadnezzar crying and saying, have mercy on us, God, Tsar. When I heard this, I grieved and cried with twofold mourning, not only because they were hung up, but because they were calling on a foreign God saying, have mercy on us. But I remember days of festivity, which we cited in Jerusalem before our captivity. And when I remembered, I groaned and returned to my house, wailing and weeping. Now then pray in the place where you are, you and Abimelech, for this people, that they may listen to, to my voice and to, and to the decrees of my mouth, so that we may depart from here. For I tell you, the entire time that we have spent here, they have kept us in subjection, saying, Recite for us a song from the, from the songs of Zion. the song of our God. And we replied to them, how we sing for you since we are in a foreign land. So references Psalm 136, verse 3, C and 4 here, 136, Psalm 136, verse 4. And after this, Jeremiah tied the letter to the eagle's neck saying, go in peace. And may the Lord watch over both of us. And the eagle took flight and came to Jerusalem and gave the letter to Baruch. And when he had united, or excuse me, and when he had untied it, read it, and kissed it, and wept, he read it, excuse me, he read it, he kissed it, and wept when he heard about the distresses and afflictions of the people. But Jeremiah took the figs and distributed them to the sick among the people. And he kept teaching them to abstain from pollutions of the Gentiles of Babylon. And the day came in which the Lord brought the people out of Babylon. And the Lord said to Jeremiah, Rise up, you and the people, and come to the Jordan and say to the people, let anyone who desires the Lord forsake the works of Babylon. As for the men who took wives from them and the women who took husbands from them, those who listen to you shall cross over and you shall take them into Jerusalem. But those who do not listen to you do not lead them there. And Jeremiah spoke these words to the people and they arose and came to the Jordan to cross over. And as, as he told them the words of the Lord that the Lord had spoken to him, half of those who had taken spouses from them did not wish to listen to Jeremiah, but said, we will never forsake our wives, but we will bring them back with us into our city. So they crossed the Jordan and came to Jerusalem. And Jeremiah and Baruch and Abimelech stood up and said, no man joined with the Babylonians shall enter this city. And they said to one another, Let us arise and return to Babylon to take our place. And they departed. But while they were coming to Babylon, the Babylonians came out to meet them, saying, You shall not enter our city, for you hated us and used us secretly. Therefore you cannot come in with us. For we have taken a solemn oath together in the name of our God to receive neither you nor your children, since you left us secretly. And when they heard this, they returned and came to a desert place some distance from Jerusalem and built a city for themselves and named it Samaria. And Jeremiah said to them, sent to them saying, Repent, for the angel of righteousness is coming and, and will lead you to your exalted place. Those who were with Jeremiah were rejoicing and offering sacrifices on behalf of the people for, na for nine days. But on the tenth, Jeremiah alone offered sacrifice. And he prayed a prayer saying, Holy, holy, 
holy, fragrant, or fragrant aroma of the living trees, true light that enlightens me until I des- ascend to you. For your mercy, I beg you. For the sweet voice of the two seraphim, I beg. For another fragrant aroma. And may Michael, archangel of righteousness, who opens the gates to the righteous, be my my guardian until he causes the righteous to enter. I beg you, almighty Lord of all creation, unbegotten and incomprehensible, in whom all judgment was hidden before these things came into existence. When Jeremiah had said this, and while he was standing in the altar area with Baruch and Abimelech, he became as one of one whose soul had departed. And Baruch and Abimelech were weeping and crying out in a loud voice, Woe to us, for our father Jeremiah has left us. The priest of God has departed. And all the people heard their weeping, and they all ran to them and saw Jeremiah lying on the ground as if dead. And they tore their garments and put dust on their heads and wept bitterly. And after this, they prepared to bury him. And behold, there came a voice saying, Do not bury the one who yet lives, for his soul is returning to his body. And when they heard the voice, they did not bury him, but stayed around his tabernacle for three days, saying, When will he arise? And after three days, his soul came back into his body and he raised his voice in the midst of them, in the midst of them all and said, glorify God with one voice. All of you glorify God and the son of God who awakens us, Messiah Jesus. Light, the light of all the ages, the inextinguishable lamp, the light, the life of light of faith, excuse me, life of faith. But after these, there shall be 477 years more, and he comes to earth. And the tree of life planted in the midst of paradise will cause all the unfruitful trees to bear fruit and will grow and sprout forth. And the trees that had sprouted and become haughty and said, we have supplied our power to the air. He will cause them to wither with the grandeur of their branches, and he will cause them to be judged, that firmly rooted tree. And what is crimson will become white as snow. The snow will be blackened. The sweet waters will become salty, the salty sweet, in the intense light of the joy of God. And he will bless the isles so that they may become fruitful word of the mouth of his Messiah. For he shall come and he will go out and choose for himself twelve apostles to proclaim the news among the nations. He whom I have seen adorned by his father and coming into the world on the Mount of Olives. And he shall fill the hungry souls. When Jeremiah was saying this concerning the Son of God, that he is coming into the world, the people became very angry and said, this is a repetition of the word spoken by Isaiah, son of Amos, when he said, I saw God and the Son of God. Come then and let us not kill him by the same sort of death with which he killed Isaiah. But let us stone him with stones. And Baruch and Abimelech were greatly grieved because they wanted to hear in full the mysteries that had been seen. But Jeremiah said to them, Be silent and weep not. They cannot kill me until I describe for you everything I saw. And he said to him, and he said to them, Bring a stone here to me. And he set it up and said, Light of the ages, make this stone to become like, like me in appearance, until I have described to Baruch and Abimelech everything I saw. Then the stone, by God's command, took on the appearance of Jeremiah. And they were stoning the stone, opposing, excuse me, supposing that it was Jeremiah. But Jeremiah delivered to Baruch 
and to Abimelech all the mysteries he had seen. And forthwith he stood in the midst of the people, desiring to complete his ministry. Then the stone cried out, saying, O oh, foolish children of Israel, why do you stone me, supposing that I am Jeremiah? Behold, Jeremiah is standing in your midst. And when they saw him, immediately they rushed upon him with moans, and his ministry, and his ministry was fulfilled. And when Baruch and Abimelech came, they buried him. And taking the stone, they placed it on his tomb, inscribing it thus, This is the stone that was the ally of Jeremiah. The Lord spoke to Jeremiah before the capture of Jerusalem and how the capture happened. In those days, the Lord spoke to Jeremiah, Arise, de depart from this city with Baruch, since I am going to destroy it because of the multitude of the sins of those who dwell in it. For your prayers are like solid pillars in its midst and like an indestructible wall surrounding it. Okay, so this is, I think this is the same as what we read earlier. All right, so let me see here. Um, yeah, so this is the same as what we read earlier here. As far as I see, let me just double check. Yeah, so I, we read the longer version, and as far as I understand, that includes also the shorter version, which we were just about to read there. We were just getting into. So I probably wouldn't be good to... Uh, let me see here. This last verse, I'll read this, and then I'll get to your questions and comments. And the sacred vessels Jeremiah laid away according to the commandment of God. So this is the last verse of the short version. Uh, sealing in this, in this stone with his finger in the name of God, through the writing of iron, the imprint has become on the stone a shadowy cloud, because it is indistinguishable. And the stone is in the desert where formerly... The ark was prepared with the others. In this, Jeremiah spoke. The Lord went up to heaven from Zion, but he will come again to visit Zion, and the coming of the Messiah will be the sign whenever every nation worships the cross, glorifying and praising God, to whom becomes all glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So, okay, so let's get into some of the questions and the comments. Again, if we have, if you have any questions specifically directed to me, just put at Christopher in the live chat. Brick train, how do you how do you avoid the unrighteous without being hateful? Uh, what did Jesus mean when treat someone like a non-believer? Um, so the non-believers, I mean, they they weren't treated like horribly. They weren't like like it wasn't like that. No, it's just like they weren't like treated as, you know, like for example, um, you can have family members or close friends or, you know, people that are clo in close communion community with you. That's one thing. And then you have, let's just say people walking down the street or something like that. I mean, you're not hateful to them. It's just that you're not in community with them. You're not, you're not like, um, you know, they're not part of your people. You know, if you know what I mean, figuratively speaking. So that's what he means by, you know, just treat them like a non-believer. It doesn't mean, you know, being hateful to them. Uh, thank you for the question there, Brick Train. Uh, 
Tammy says, Shalom all. Shalom, Tammy. Good to see you. Billy says, Shalom. Good to see you, Billy. Vinny says, Shalom, everyone. Good to see you, Billy. Or Vinny, excuse me. Um, shalom, Vinny. Shalom, uh, Billy. <laughs> I think it's a little bit of a tongue twister. Say that together very fast. Welcome, 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 everyone. Good to see you. Going nowhere, ask a question, are the, are the spirit and the soul the same thing? Uh, not really. I mean, it's like it's like bones and marrow, if you know what I mean. I mean, I don't know how else to describe it. It's like spirit is... Um, it's If I can use the word material, that is like... Uh, it's hard to uh, how, hard to explain. Soul would be like you, who you are. Your spirit would be like, um, I. It's like pretty much inseparable the the spirit and the soul. And often I use those two words interchangeably because of that fact. Um, it's it's almost like saying, what's the difference between you and your your body, your physical body? That's kind of like the difference between the soul and the spirit. So the spirit is not physical, of course. All right. So just like our physical body is not really spirit. Okay. But our soul is, is really who we, who we really are. You know, our, the essence of, of our, of who we are personally. Spirit is more like what, just like how physical, your physical body, you can have a physical body um, and that doesn't really tell you anything about the soul. Spirit, you can have a spirit, but that doesn't tell you anything about a soul either. The spirit is like, it's like a, it's like a different body, if you want to put it that way, um, of the of an of the spiritual realm it's like a spiritual body of the spiritual realm just that just as the physical body is a is of the is, is of the physical realm um so you know so like it talks about it talks about in the scriptures how you know your spirit let me just pull it up here So on a blue letter Bible, for example, you do a search for your spirit. You know, it comes up right here. Uh, let me just. Okay, did not take it. This is uh, Malachi 2 verse 15. And did not take and did not he make one? Yet he had the residue of the spirit. And wherefore one, that he might seek a godly seed. Therefore, take heed to your spirit and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. Okay. Malachi 2.15, For the Lord, the God of Israel, saith that he hates putting away, for one covers, one covers violence with his garment, uh, saith the Lord of hosts, Therefore, take heed to your spirit that you deal not treacherously. Yeah, so, I mean, there's, it's, it's, it's almost inseparable. It is inseparable, basically, uh, your spirit and your soul. Just like how you say, how can you have bones without, without marrow in it? I, mean, I suppose it's possible. We have to have a bone without any marrow at all. Um, but you know, it's, it's all part of the same parcel. 
Very good question. Going nowhere. Thank you for your question. Mark says, Shalom, Shalom, Mark. Good to see you. Going nowhere asked a question, do you think non-Christians get to heaven, can get to heaven? That is a tough... First of all, we need to define Christian. You, you ask 10 different people what a Christian is, you can get 10 different answers. Some people believe that Christians are just people who believe in God. They don't, you know, if, as long as you believe in God, you're a Christian. A lot of people believe that. Some people believe that Christians are people who have to go to church. Right? What is your definition of Christian? There's a lot of people, you know, some people believe that Catholics are not Christians. Roman Catholics. Other people say that, yeah, the Roman Catholic Church is Christian. Some people believe that Jehovah's are Christians. Other people say, no, Jehovah's Witnesses are not Christians. So the word Christian is very, very overused, to say the, to say the, to say the least. Uh, if you could define what you mean by Christian, and I can answer that a lot, easier uh, going nowhere. Thank you. Kingdom concepts, I say amen to this. Anyone who is righteous will have eternal life. Amen. Amen. Pete? Fear Manga says shalom again. Your monger says, your spirit goes back to Yah when you die. Your soul goes down to Sheol and awaits, awaits resurrection. Again, it depends on how you, how you uh, define soul. Uh, to me, a soul is, is something that's conscious. Like it's, it's who you are. Like it's, it's you. Um, your conscious, you know, you. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. Uh, and if that's the case, um, a lot of people have, uh, and it also says in the scriptures too, a lot of times people, you know, the people who are, who don't have, that are not right with God. Yeah. Their soul goes down to shale, but people who are right with God, like, let's say for example, the, um, Lazarus in uh, Luke chapter, uh, 16, Lazarus, you know, he went to paradise. His soul went to paradise. Psalm 94 says, we were taught in church that the soul was where the emotions were and the spirit is where God lives. I would say it's a little bit of a weird way to put it. Because the scriptures say like, well, I mean, all the way through the scriptures, you hear about like how God lives within you, which could also mean within your physical body as well. Tammy says, would your soul be the personality of your spirit? Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Going nowhere asked the question, do you think one can really sell their soul to the devil in exchange for something? Oh, sure. Yes, they do. Far too many people do that. Thank you for your question. Fearmonger says, most modern Christians who don't follow the commandments are not going to the kingdom. Amen to that. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. 
Yes, Kingdom Concepts also quotes Matthew 19, eternal life. I believe in Mark chapter 9 as well, and I think it's Luke chapter 10 as well. If my memory serves me correctly, yes, awesome. Going nowhere asks the question, if one doesn't believe in God or Jesus, or if they reject God and Jesus, can they still get to heaven? Uh, okay, there's two different questions here, right? One is, if one doesn't believe in God or Jesus. I believe that babies can, quote-unquote, get to heaven, if you want to put it that way. I believe that babies that die before they're born, quote-unquote, get to heaven. Um, so, do they believe in God? Well, people might, someone might argue that they do, but I don't know. Do they believe? Do they really believe in God? Uh, perhaps. You know, everybody has an innate, you know, sense of God, especially as a tiny little child, perhaps. You know, um, if they re reject God and, and Jesus. So, Again, there's there's a lot wrapped up in that question. Um, so no, like it, it, if someone rejects God, then you know that means they, they reject God's everything. You know God's laws, God's ways, and no, they they cannot. Um, they're not going to be in in the right place. That's for sure. Um, going nowhere says, what kind of people go to hell? Um, anybody who breaks, at least especially habitually practices breaking of the commandments, any of the commandments that is. Fearmonger says, nobody actually goes to heaven. They are resurrected to go to the kingdom. Okay. Not sure what you mean by that, but because uh, some people say, no, no, there's no such thing as heaven. It's paradise. Other people say, well, no, it's not. You shouldn't say heaven. You should rather say, you know, uh, something else. Like they have different names for it. So I'm not sure if that's what you're getting at, Fearmonger. Uh, and they are resurrected to go to the kingdom. Now, again, I'm not entirely sure what you're getting at there. If you're talking about like the last day resurrection that, that, that has not, never happened yet, that's a possibility. There are some people who believe that uh, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 15, uh, when Paul speaks about the resurrection, there are some people who believe that Paul um, preaches a non-physical, non-bodily resurrection when he says that uh, it is so natural and raised spiritual. So again, that's, that's a, very, uh, it's a very deep subject as well. Yeah, so fearmonger, Daniel 12, 1 and 2, and Esdras 7. I'm not sure if you if you mean second Esdras, but um, I always say if people uh, just just to save time here, so that not everybody's waiting here. Uh, if 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 you want to quote scripture, if you could just actually put it in the live chat, it will it will help save time here. So let's go over to. Daniel 12, verse 1, at the same time, Michael stand, shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which stands for the uh, children of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to the same time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone uh, that shall be found written in the book, and many of them that, sh that sleep in the dust shall then awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt." Yes, yes. This is talking about the physical resurrection, but that's not talking about the actual going to paradise, right? So like Luke chapter 16, which illustrates it so beautifully. Um, 
Yeah. So in the book of Enoch as well, where there's like there, there are places that souls go to and they spend their time there almost like a um a waiting place or an intermittent place to stay at before judgment day. And those places can be places of torment or places of great pleasure, like paradise versus what quote unquote hell. Uh, going nowhere, do you think heaven is similar to the Garden of Eden? Yes. Yeah, I do. Question for Move says, uh, so I did go to the mall, was planning for a wait, but had to go early. However, I did not spend a single cent, nor got someone to uh, to work for me when I was hired. This is still a sin. Uh, so, um, it's a tough call because I mean, it's a tough call. Uh, you know, typically on, on Sabbath, we're not supposed to, you know, do any, um, unnecessary travels. Uh, of course there are exceptions like, you know, to, to, to be a blessing to someone somehow. I mean, if someone needs you, um, that kind of thing, of course, there's a, there's an exception for that. So it's, it's a very tough call. Um, would I go? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go. Um, yeah, it's a tough call. You know, it, it's just, it's like seeing how, how close you want to get to the edge before you fall off. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's really tough, uh, to, to make a call on that uh, question for move. Question for move. Doesn't Luke 16 talk about shale? Um, well, yeah, yeah, it, it does. It says the rich man died and was buried, which implies Sheol. Yeah. Yeah. Abraham's bosom and Hades. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm pretty much at the end here. And so if there are no other questions, I will wrap this up. Going nowhere, where does the term Abraham's bosom come from? Uh, I believe it's just a, uh, like a euphemism or it's, it's just like a, um, it's just a figure of speech. You know, uh, I've heard testimonies of, of, I don't know how many people who say that they have been to a place like paradise, people that have, uh, that have passed away, they have clinically died and, and have been, you know, resuscitated sometime later. And, um, you know, most, if not all of them, most say that they, they meet Abraham there. Abraham is like, that's his thing. It's like, he's like, you know, he wants to meet all of his children, so to speak. And they, so it's, it's like a figure of speech, Abraham's bosom. Uh, that's how I understand it is. And of course it's, it's not literal, but, uh, I believe it's called that. I believe, well, it's only called that once. As far as I understand, in all of Scripture, it's only called that once. So, I mean, seeing that it's only called that once, I wouldn't put too much emphasis on that term. But uh, see, Kingdom Concepts, Brother Pete says, came from Jubilees 23. Let's quickly check that out. Do you have a do you have a verse there, Brother Pete?
22 verse 26, 22 verse 26. Okay. Okay, 22, verse 26, and the two lay together on one bed, and Jacob slept in the bosom of Abraham, his father's father, and he kissed him seven times, and his affliction and his heart rejoiced over him. And he blessed him with all his heart and said, uh, the Most High God, the God of all, the Creator of us, of all, who brought me forth. Okay, so it goes on, to, and then I know it goes on to chapter 23, as well and it mentions um verse two and notwithstanding all this uh, jacob was lying in his bosom uh knew not that abraham his father's father was dead okay so yeah so in the, in that in that um instance it's obviously that's that's literal for sure thanks for pointing that out there brother pete okay um all right so seeing that we have Going nowhere, asking questions. So Abraham's bosom is another name for Sheol, right? Or am I wrong? No, I don't think so. I think it's the opposite of Sheol. Abraham's bosom is paradise, not not Sheol. You got a lot of people, a lot of ungodly people who die and go to Sheol, and they're not going into Abraham's bosom, that's for sure. Yeah, like this is what Brother Pete here says. It's a name for right, the righteous compartment. Yeah, and I believe that Brother Pete is speaking this way and kind of like on using terms like compartment, like how the Book of Enoch uses. Okay, yeah, I, 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 I understand this too. I, you know, the first, yeah, everyone goes to Sheol in, yeah, at least the physical part of them does, yes. Sheol means grave, basically, just so you know, um, going nowhere. So we got the rich man that died and went and was buried, basically, and I believe that that's talking about not just his physical body but his his soul as well went to uh sheol whereas uh lazarus died and it says the uh, the angels carried him to abraham's bosom so i i i read that as that his physical body his physical body was buried but he himself his his soul what makes him lazarus himself was taken by the angels to abraham's bosom um, and that goes right along with all of the, um, again, all of the other people who have, if you like, I think it's very, very important for people to study the testimonies of people who have clinically died and come back to talk about what happened afterwards. And so I say that because I couldn't tell you how many, like countless people who have said that they've died and Whenever they're going to a place they call heaven or paradise, excuse me, they always say that the angels take them there. The angels are the ones who take them, usually two angels, one on each side, taking them there. So, uh, yeah. So going to ask the question, which biblical figure would you be more anxious, most anxious to meet in heaven? I, you know, I, I, I can't answer that question. I mean, there's, there's so many that are very, very, um, you know, very interesting. Uh, whoever, the first one that I'll, the first one, I mean, Lord willing, uh, you know, the first one uh, that I get to is going to be the first one I get to, or the first one that comes to me is going to be the first one that comes to me. So 
you know, I'll just take, I'll take it, whatever, whatever, uh, whatever God has for me. See the kingdom concept says the rich man was in the was in the unrighteous com, unrighteousness compartment waiting for a Gehenna. In the unrighteousness compartment, if you want to, I mean, I don't want to split hairs over this kind of stuff, but the unrighteousness compartment would be a place of torment, just like how we read in um, Luke chapter sixteen, right? He was tormented in flame. There is no quote unquote heaven because the Most High's house will be on earth. But yeah, yeah, I understand. Like understand that. But again, you know, not not to say that there isn't a place that is a place of great joy and and uh, and great glory and beauty and 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 pleasure that people would describe as heaven or paradise, as it says that Lazarus was in that kind of place in Luke chapter sixteen. I think people need to understand that there are two different, like there's two different kind of judgments, so to speak, right? There's the, it's when a person passes away, their, their soul exists consciously either as, in, as, as a dead spirit, as a dead soul, so to speak, or living, right? You, you, you have that life or you have death. The death is that torment that people actually even go through even while while they're here on earth i have spoken uh, like this kind of thing i remember i went around uh, this would be almost 30 years ago now i went around door to door can you imagine me knocking knocking on your door i went around door to door asking people about these kind of questions face to face talking to these people do you believe in heaven do you believe in hell almost everybody said they believe in heaven and almost everybody said they don't believe in hell they said hell is on earth i understand what they mean they're wrong in the sense that there is no hell, but I understand what they mean by hell is here on earth because they don't have that life in them. They exist in that death. And so they don't have happiness. They don't have pleasure. The only happiness and pleasure they have is the worldly physical realm around them, the money, the fame, the drugs, the sex, whatever that, whatever it is. Um, that this world has to offer. That's the only pleasure they have. So when they pass away, their soul exists, continues to be con consciously exist, but that hell that they that they're talking about, that they live, that they're that they are in while living on earth, they continue in that hell. They continue living in that hell. Albeit it's much worse for them because now they can't have the drugs, the alcohol, the sex, and everything else, and all the idols and everything else that that this life hat uh, offers. So they are in even worse torment than they were when they were physically and biologically alive. Now, because of the fact that they lose, they lose their connection with the physical, uh, the material world. And in the same way, I believe that people who really have quote unquote life. They, this world is like heaven on earth to them. You know, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's like, you know, and I, many people have experienced this, I know. And I, I mean, many times it's like myself, it's like, man, wow, I, I feel like I, I, I was in, I'm in heaven sometimes. Um, not all the time. <laughs> so um, when we pass away, we just shed that physical part of us off, right? We shed that worldly, material, physical world off. So if we're not given over to the things of the world, the idols, the materialism, the money, the sex, the drugs, the alcohol, and all the other things that this world, you know, people are getting involved. If so if we don't have any of that in our life, but we only have him, we only have God, and we have that life, then passing away is like, wow, it's just like, it's like, it's like going from a caterpillar to a butterfly. It's like, wow, you know, um, so we continue in that conscious state of, of life, just like how people, when they pass away, they continue in that conscious state of death, where they are in 
they are very miserable to say the least, but even more so because they have no money. <laughs> they have no booze. <laughs> they have no, none of the stuff that, that this world has to offer. And the fact that they can't get it, even though they probably still lust for it, the fact that they can't get it even makes it worse for them. So, Fearmonger says, do you believe the account of 2nd Ezra 7? Yes. Yeah, and in 2nd Ezra 7, it's it's pretty clear pretty much what I'm saying. Going nowhere says, uh, I hate to say the P word, but what would you want to ask Paul? Um... I don't know. I don't know, really. Um, why did you write the way you wrote? I mean, it's very, a lot of people, caused a lot of confusion. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know what I would ask him. Maybe not that at all. Maybe I wouldn't ask him that. It's, it's hard to, it's, it's hard to speculate on, you know, something that will happen in the next world, so to speak, the Olam Haba. Uh, it's hard to ex- speculate on that because I can say one thing and it can, it can turn out to be something completely different than that. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, guys, so I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to wrap it up for tonight. And so tomorrow we will continue with our reading. And our, our uh, again, we're doing a kind of a loosely chronological reading here of the scriptures. And so uh, it's always uh, it's always a pleasure to, uh, to fellowship with you guys and to talk. And thank you guys in the live chat uh, for your questions and your comments and your, your contributions to the fellowship this evening or today, wherever you are in the world. I know in, with, with Vinny, it's, he's down under. So, uh, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it would be, uh, in the morning, I guess for, for Vinny there. So anyways, guys, once again, thanks again for your fellowship and your, your questions, your comments. You guys are awesome. Lord bless you. I, I pray that everything that we, uh, read today and everything, everything that we discussed is, is going to be a great blessing to you. And, uh, and, and increase your knowledge in the things of the Lord and in, in the scriptures. Amen. All right. So, um, going nowhere says one last thing I'm dealing with heartbreak right now. It's over a girl. Can you please pray that, that I emotionally heal from this? Okay. We'll pray for, uh, going nowhere and, and that will be it for the night. So, Father, we thank you, Father, for your blessings again tonight. Thank you, Father, for thank you, Father, for your spirit. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Father, for the scriptures. Thank you, Father, for the privilege that we have of, of reading these scriptures and studying and, and thinking about these things and discussing these things. Thank you, Father, for everyone that's watching. And I just ask you would bless them abundantly. And Father, we ask for going nowhere that you would that you would heal. Uh, you would heal his heart. You would give him great peace and uh, great closure. And um, and that uh, if there's anything that needs to be forgiven between him and his and his uh, and this girl he's is referring to here, I pray that you would give him the the strength to to forgive and to confess that before you father and to heal his heart completely heal his emotions completely in the name of yeshua of nazareth and everyone said amen and amen all right thank you very much going nowhere oh vinnie says it's 10 37 a.m where he is wow all right so that's like 14 hours difference so wow Okay, so 
Billy says, Shalom and sweet dreams. Shalom, Billy. Blessings, blessings. Psalm 94 says, good night and shalom. Vinny says, thank you, Christopher. Many blessings to everyone. Shalom and many blessings multiplied back to you as well. Vinny, you and yours in Australia. Going nowhere says, thank you, Chris. And thank you once again. All right. As always, I pray the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Lift up his countenance upon you. We give you wonderful, wonderful shalom. Amen, amen. See you tomorrow night.